What's up brewing peeps? Brewing Daddy here and we are about to start another brew. One of our favorites. This is the Northern Brewers One Gallon Smashing Pumpkin. It's a fall pumpkin flavored ale. One of our favorite beers to drink. So let's see what we got in the box. Big lot of paper as usual. We got some gold malt extract syrup. We've got some Cascade Hops. We've got some Smashing Ale, Smashing Pumpkin Ale Grains. Got some Fizz Drops. We've got our uh, steeping bag for our grains. we got our American Ale Yeast. And they also include a small package of um, spice, pumpkin spice in the uh, recipe. You can actually add pumpkin to this recipe if you like, but I, I don't add it. I like it just as it is. And then of course our instructions from Nor Northern Brewer, which are usually very thorough. So not a whole lot going on here. You know, we've got some grains of steep, liquid malt extract, one hop to put in, and that's pretty much it. And then the yeast, and then our fizz drops for bottling. So we'll get the pot hot here in a minute and uh, we'll get this brew started. Let's get it. All right, so we got our burner lit. We got a gallon in the pot already. We're gonna put another half gallon because we like to brew with a gallon and a half. So let's get in the other half gallon. This is heating up. We'll throw our thermometer in it and uh, we'll steep our grains. Got a gallon and a half there. Got our thermometer, stick it in. I like to keep an eye on the temperature. All right, now we'll put our grains in our bag. We should actually try to get this up to about 150 degrees really before we put our grains in. They usually recommend about that, that temperature range. So before we put these in, we will let this heat up for a minute. And right now it's not very hot. It's like at 80 degrees at the moment. So I'm gonna hold off on putting those in, <clears throat> let it at least get 120, 130 degrees. Then we'll put them in. We gotta steep them for 10 minutes. So we'll be right back when we get ready to do that once the water heats. All right, so our water is warm enough. It's actually already up to 140 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and get our grains in the bag. Just stick the bag inside the bag. <laughs> That's the easiest way to do it. Tie a knot. Normally I'll clamp it on here, on the side here. But this time I'm just gonna try, you know what? I'll use my thermometer to hold it down. It's already here. There we go. Perfect. So uh, we're going to let those uh, sit in there. And actually, I'm going to have, probably have to do something different with that. So we're going to use this little chip clip to hold it in place. Uh, the bag's not very big, so I'm not going to be able to tie it. But we're going to wet it really good. Then I'm just going to clip it on the handle here just to keep it from falling down into the pot. And it's submerged, so that's good. <clears throat> We're already up to 160 degrees now. Got my timer set for 10 minutes, so I'm gonna start it right now. So it's running. And while we wait, we got 10 minutes of steeping. We're gonna pull the grains out when the timer goes off. And then we'll wait for a boil to start and then we can get in our malt extract and our cascade hops. These both go in at the start of the boil. We're gonna boil 45 minutes. When we cut the heat, we're gonna put in the pumpkin spice and then we're gonna get this baby cooled off and into our fermenter. Now our fermenter's off to the side right now and it is uh, sanitized already. It's got solution in it along with the airlock and the scissors that I'm gonna be using to open up the uh, yeast with. So we're all set, ready to go. We're gonna be having some pumpkin 
ale in about a month from now, but uh, be back here in a few minutes. In the meantime, we're going to drink one of our own home brews here. This is a uh, fresh squished IPA, very good beer. Be right back. All right, our timers went off so we can get our grains out. I'm just gonna drain this really good. Everything uh, drain out of there. And uh, one thing I did not mention earlier was it's always a good idea to put your um, liquid malt extract because it's very syrupy in a uh, pot of hot water. I'm gonna let that sit there for a little bit longer to try to get it to uh, until I can get the water the uh, kettle up to a boil but uh, it'll make the pouring of the malt extract a whole lot easier and you'll get everything out of the container. All right, I think that's pretty good. We got everything out of that. All right, right now we're sitting at, looks like we're right at about 200 degrees. So we've got a few more degrees to go before we'll start boiling, but it's not gonna be long. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I'm probably gonna go ahead and get my malt extract in before the boil starts, maybe wait till about 210 degrees, but we'll be back when we do that. We're back and we're getting very close to boil. We're sitting at 210 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and pour in our liquid malt extract because the boil is gonna start here very, very soon. it in while we're doing this we'll pull out our thermometer while we're or set it off to the side anyways things hot we'll get all of our syrup in here or malt extract in here it's gonna take a minute even after heating it up <clears throat> probably should have let it heat a little longer I would recommend doing this right at the beginning of when you're heating up your pot and everything uh, because it takes a while to get it nice and liquidy. It's not bad. I mean, we're, we're getting most of it out of here. Once I get it all out of here, I'm going to stir it up good. I got to put it in a hop salsa. All right, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Hops in. It's Cascade hops, and that's a, a 3.5 gram package. Just make sure we got it all in here. <clears throat> I like using a hop spider, but with only just one hops addition to this recipe, I'm not going to worry about. Uh, I'm going to worry about it. Not going to be a whole lot. It'll all sink down to the bottom of the fermenter, and you'll be able, you'll get a real clue, clear brew. I want to say this is the third time I've brewed this one, and uh, it's one of my favorites. I really like it of all the ales. As a matter of fact, I really need to do this in a five gallon, and I most likely will. This one and Honey Country Pilsner are, are two of my favorites. So you want to stir this up good, make sure all your malt extract is, you know, not stuck on the bottom and uh, is all integrated in with your hops and your, your boiling water here, your uh, wort. As soon as we pulled out the, put the grain in it and steeped it, it's considered wort. Wort. Sorry for my Southern pronunciation. All right, so uh, looking good. That all looks mixed in really good. And I, I will say this with brewing, um, I'm always cleaning stuff. And I think that's 95% of the success of brewing. I, I keep a lot of uh, 
Clorox wipes and containers and I'm constantly wiping down. I even wipe this down with Clorox wipes just because I want everything to be clean. Even in between steps, if it gets messy, I'll come back and wipe it down. You don't see me doing that on, on the camera, but I do do that between uh, shots. So always keep some Clorox wipes, you know, wherever you do your brewing at. I do mine in my garage, but uh, as you can tell from the background, uh, but uh, no, they're not props. It's just, it's my garage. But uh, anyways, I always keep some Clorox wipes and roll of paper towels just handy because you're gonna have spills and messes and all that good stuff. And I try to keep my work area as clean as possible. You know, the better cleanliness, the better your beer is gonna turn out. All right, so we're gonna get a thermometer back in. And uh, let's see where we're at. I've got a feeling we're really, really close because I can, I can hear it. You know when it's getting close because you'll, you'll hear the rumble and, and it is, it's really, really close. We are it's slowing down at 210, but I'm sure it's a little above that. Can't remember the uh, exact temperature that water boils at, but it's not much above that. So it's getting ready to boil. Uh, we'll bring you back when the boil starts and then we'll uh, go from there. All right, our boil has started. I did cut the heat back just a hair and uh, I'm gonna give it a good stir at this point and I'm gonna go ahead and get our uh, timer started. I set it for 45 minutes. And I, I was close, it's 218 degrees at the uh, water will boil. So uh, it started boiling right at 218 degrees. Pulled my thermometer out and sanitized it. And I'll sanitize it again before I put it in my uh, cooling or chilled wort because I always check the temperature on it before I stop chilling it. It's another, I was talking about sanitation being 95% of success. Well, I'd say temperature is probably your second most important thing. Just monitoring temperatures, making sure that you're not getting your kettle too hot, you bring it up to the right temperature, you monitor it, you don't burn your, your <clears throat> malt extract. I have burned it before, it's no fun when that happens. I had a uh, very cheap five gallon pot, which I've made a video of that I uh, reviewed, and I used that thing one time. It was terrible, and uh, I burned that patch. Although I was able to salvage it, I actually, uh, I was able to uh, kind of strain out and scoop up a lot of the, the burnt malt off the bottom, but I was lucky I was able to salvage it. It turned out to be a pretty decent beer, actually, amazingly. But uh, we're not gonna be using these until like I said, the spice will go in at the end. Yeast will go in when we put everything in our fermenter. And we will, uh, I do recommend when you, before you put your yeast in, before you dump your fermenter of the sanitation fluid to dump this in it, just for at least a minute or so. I wouldn't leave it in too long. I don't like leaving these packets of yeast in the, the sanitation solution very long, but they recommend that. Um, scissors are already soaking in it, but I'll, I'll do that and then pull it out and let it sit before we, uh, we do. Now my boil's kind of went, it's kind of backed off a little bit, but I uh, might have to adjust my heat just a hair. Like I turned it back too much. Uh, <clears throat> following up on my review of this new burner, and this is actually, I believe the first time I've used it for a one gallon batch believe and so far this thing is awesome this uh these dark star burners are incredible uh you can dial the heat up and down just like you want it i mean it's so amazing uh, i was using a turkey fryer burner for the longest time and i finally bought this thing and i don't regret it this, this thing is awesome and it can accommodate a lot of different sizes now my boil's starting to go again and as you can see from the overhead camera, 
it's just a very slow rolling. That's all you want. You don't want it. You don't want a violent boil. You just want it to be a very slow rolling boil. Stir it every few minutes and just keep an eye on it. Um, the liquid malt extract is a lot easier than the uh, <laughs> the powdered the powdered stuff. I really don't like, but it makes some good beer. But I really hate using it. Uh, but we'll be back here. We got 45, well, on the timer, we got 41 minutes remaining. We'll be back after 41 minutes. Gives us some time to enjoy this squished IPA that we brewed a few months ago. It's a good beer. I think we can probably drink one or two by the time this thing's done. But uh, we'll see you back in about 40 minutes or so. All right, our timer just went off. And we're gonna cut our heat. Right, we'll Covered up. And we're gonna transfer this into the sink with some ice water to cool it down. And we'll be back when we do that. All right, so we've got an ice bath here. I'm gonna go ahead and get it all iced up. I'm gonna let that sit. And it should cool down here, maybe 30 minutes or so and we'll be able to transfer it into our fermenter once it's cooled off. We are back and our wort has been chilled. It's ready to go into our fermenter. Uh, one thing that we did miss when we were shooting the video earlier was putting in the uh, pumpkin spice, which we ended up doing uh, off camera. As soon as we put it in the ice bath, we realized it and we got it in there right away. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this transferred. Gosh, it smells really good. It looks wonderful. Man, it's so clear. Super clear, this looks really good. There's very little uh, residue in the bottom. It's a little bit, but not much. There's a little bit of cloudiness. I'm not going to pour this last bit, as you can see. <clears throat> I don't know if that other camera will pick it up, but <clears throat> there's a little bit of uh, milkiness there at the bottom I'm going to leave out. I'm going to get our yeast in, sanitize our scissors and our yeast packet. And just as a precaution, so you're not getting any bacteria and just sprinkle your yeast over the top. And we'll get our, pull our airlock out so it won't bubble everywhere while we're putting our lid on. <clears throat> just wanna make sure you get your lid pushed down all the way. And that looks pretty good. Um, there is a little bit of sanitizer solution. You want to leave a little bit, maybe about half inside and just gently push this on. It's going to try to bubble up when you push it on. Perfect. In a few days, this is going to start uh, bubbling up. The yeast will start doing its thing and uh, it'll start releasing carbon dioxide and we'll get all kinds of bubbling action. But we're done as far as the first stage of doing this pumpkin uh, ale. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks and we're going to bottle it up. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We're giving away a beer uh, making starter kit from morebeer.com. There's another video we posted about that details on how to enter, but one of them is subscribe. And then you also need to post in the comments of that video. And in uh, March, we'll be selecting the winner. Uh, 
Don't forget to visit brewingdaddy.com. Lots of great content there. Like us uh, or find us on Facebook. That's Brewing Daddy. And also on Twitter, we're Brewing Daddy. And don't forget Instagram and TikTok. We're also there. Well, hope you all had a great week. We'll see you next time. Peace out.